Otherwise, Breaking news today. Take a look. The three men charged in the disappearance of Bardstown mother Crystal Rogers in court today. Joseph Lawson, his dad Steve Lawson, and the original chief suspect, the former boyfriend Brooks Halk, all sitting in the courtroom at the same time for the first time in this case. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us here at 5 o'clock. I'm Doug Profit. The entire court appearance for all three men lasted under an hour. The big news, a trial date has now been set in this case for February 10th, 2025 one year from now. The prosecutor wants them tried all together. At the end of 2023, Rogers' former boyfriend, Brooks Houck, was charged with murder and tampering with physical evidence in connection to her disappearance. Stephen Lawson, who worked for Houck, and his son, Joseph Lawson, were also arrested last year in connection to the FBI's major investigation. Both men are charged with conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with physical evidence. Shay McAllister joining us live right now in Nelson County. Photojournalist Jessica Farley and Shay was in the court hearing there with a WHS 11 news crew. You know, Shay, we've seen some big bombshells in the past with these appearances. Anything out of the ordinary today? Today, Doug, it was just so fascinating to see all three men in the courtroom together, something we certainly weren't expecting. And that courtroom was absolutely packed, standing room only by the time the hearing got underway. It was about 40 minutes late because they had some trouble getting Joseph Lawson over here to the courthouse from the Kentucky State Reformatory. Well, in the front rows, we had Brooks Houck's friends and family on one side, Crystal Rogers' friends and family on the other. And though this hearing was quick, only about 20 minutes start to finish, it was very telling. If the Commonwealth has it their way, this trial will be for all three of them at one time, almost a year from today. All rise. One by one, the men accused of killing Crystal Rogers filed into the courtroom. Joseph Lawson was wheeled in first, followed by his father, Steve Lawson. And then in black and white stripes with cuffs on his wrists, Crystal's former boyfriend, Brooks Howe, took his seat. It was a surprise for all three men to be brought in together, but perhaps a sign of what's to come. So you're going to be filing a motion to try all three cases together, as I take it. And then there may or may not be objections to that, I'm assuming, and we'll take that up at the proper time. The prosecutor indicating he hopes to try all three men together in one trial more than a year from now. Based upon the complexity of the nature and of the case itself and the, the, the discovery being so voluminous, we believe that a trial date is set sometime mid-February of 2025. But that date will only stick if they're able to get through the absolutely massive amounts of evidence said to be more than a terabyte, including investigative files from three different agencies, the FBI, state police, and the sheriff's office. When we received the case, it took us six, men, Ms. Young, six months to go through the discovery, and that included um, Ellis and Ballard. Jason Ellis and Tommy Ballard mentioned as part of the case file that was initially handed over to the prosecutor, but still no arrests in either of those cases, something a friend of the Ballards thinks will soon change. Well, this is not the only three that's, that's that had something to do with it. I guarantee, I'd bet they're what I got in my pocket, that there's more out there that had something to do with this. Back in the courtroom, attorneys for Joseph Lawson were fighting for a lower bond, saying their client isn't a danger to the public. It's obvious that the court can see is that uh, he, he is paraplegic. That's just a fact that exists you know, for him, and that, that obviously lessens his ability right, to, to even have any sort of free movement, independent movement, uh, which obviously goes towards uh, the lack of, a, of him being a flight risk. And it similarly, it, it goes towards uh, the lack of him being a danger. But the Commonwealth fought back, pointing to his criminal history, alleged involvement in Crystal's death, and actions after he found out detectives were eyeing him. He also is a risk once he found out that he was a subject, a target of what happened to this young woman. He called around or texted around to associates, to friends of his, to cover for him, to give him an alibi that, that night of July the 3rd when she's missing. The judge plans to rule on bond by the beginning of next week. And 20 minutes after it started, the defendants left the doors they came in, heading back to the jail cells, where they will wait for the next development in Bardstown's greatest mystery. 
Well, interesting to note here, this is the first time father and son, Joseph and Stephen, have been in the same place since the arrest. We were eager to ask the attorneys, has there been any communication? Did they have anything to say to each other? Today, Doug, the attorney said, no, no words were exchanged. Jay, you talked about, you mentioned in your story, the uh, huge amount of evidence collected in this case. What kind of pushback was there, if there was any, on that trial date for next February? And what's it going to take, uh, really, to, for that trial to happen on that date? Well, it sounds like most of the evidence, 1.1 terabyte, has already been handed over to all of the attorneys involved. The prosecutors specified they will have all of the evidence, 100% of it, completely to the attorney's teams by mid-March. And there is a status conference to make sure that happens next month. At that point, that gives them just 11 months, a little bit under a year, to review all of it. Every attorney saying, yes, we believe we'll be ready for trial then. Doug, I'll tell you, the only objection was Brian Butler, who is Brooks Hauk attorney, does not want his client tried with the other two. All right. Interesting there. Thank you very much, Jay. Again, our coverage is continuing right here at 5 and coming up in less than an hour at 5.30. Former Jefferson County Prosecutor Nick Mudd, who's now with the Mudd Law Group, is going to join me live right here uh, in our studio to talk about today's developments. And now, he's been following this case closely. Is the trial date realistic in his opinion? And will we really see it happen one year from now? Plus, what about the possibility that all three will be tried together? Some of the questions we have for attorney Nick Mudd coming up live at 530. And we do have more updates about the Crystal Rogers case right now on our website from what happened in the hearing today in Bardstown to the background information on this case. WHAS11.com journalist Joseph Garcia was in Bardstown posting live real time from the courtroom as things developed. You can check out his work right now at WHAS11.com. More of the top stories here today at six, uh, 5 o'clock. The man accused of a deadly shooting at Dosker Manor was back in court this morning. Ina Stovall is charged with the murder of Daniel West at the senior housing complex on Muhammad Ali Boulevard, just east of the downtown business district. This happened back on January 13th. His attorney made a plea to have his bond reduced, but a judge denied that request. Stovall is being held on a bond of $125,000. Avenue. LMPD says they found the body of a person inside a home. Firefighters responded to the house, which is just east of the Louisville Airport. LMPD says they are treating this as a death investigation by their homicide unit. They say there are no obvious signs of foul play. We had a warm up today after another chilly start this morning. It wasn't as cold as the past uh, few uh, mornings to get us kicked off here on this Thursday as we are heading close to the weekend. Meteorologist Colleen Peterson is joining me here at five. So Colleen, how are things shaping up for the weekend? Is it, is it going to start to cool down sometime over the weekend days? I think we'll stay in the 50s all weekend long. It's not until next week where we'll start to see our highs get back into the 40s, but we are going to continue this above average trend. Yeah, we were a little bit warmer this morning, not complaining. We were in the 40s and now we're sitting at 64, which typically that 64 should be a 44. So we are still above average. We did see some clouds starting to build and that's because we have another little short wave heading our way, which is just going to bring us some more clouds overnight tonight. Maybe an isolated sprinkle 613. That is the sunset tonight. So we still have another hour. I love seeing that time get later and later each day as, our, as we creep our way towards spring 63 by 6 p.m. tonight. I I think we'll start to cool off a little bit by the time we head towards 8 p.m. Temperatures just getting into the 50s at that time, and we're going to stay warm throughout the evening with those clouds. We could see an isolated sprinkle, but that's it. We are going to stay cloudy and warm tonight. Check out this low 51 degrees tomorrow morning. It is going to be cloudy and pretty mild throughout the start of your day and heading towards the afternoon. We're going to stay nice and mild looking at the radar right now, starting to see those clouds start to build across Kentucky and a few uh, scattered sprinkles just making its way over Bedford Brown, Brownstown right now areas far north and west of Louisville. Those sprinkles will continue here for the next few hours and that's all we're going to see. It's going to be a 20% maybe even 10% of seeing that throughout your evening and then tomorrow staying partly cloudy, but then more rain Saturday morning. I'll tell you how much we could see for your weekend ahead coming up, Doug. 
Thank you very much, Colleen. More news here today at five. Now to an issue we've been talking about for a while now, a national bus driver shortage. And JCPS is no stranger to this. While it has enough drivers to cover every route, according to the school district, that is going to be quick to change with daily call outs by drivers. And that's one of the reasons why it's hosting a bus driver blitz, a hiring blitz this weekend. Right now, JCPS has 575 bus drivers and it transports 65,000 students across Jefferson County. JCPS says it's looking for anyone over the age of 21 looking to work with students. And if you're a bit apprehensive, the school district is offering a one stop shop for all of your questions. If you attend, you'll be able to talk with current bus drivers, fill out applications, participate in on site interviews and sign up for background checks that you're going to need to have, to have finished before you start any position. This bus driver hiring blitz is a one stop shop for folks. They can come in, they can talk with current bus drivers about what the job is like and why they enjoy doing it. They can talk with our HR team and walk through the application process with them. Fill out the application. The Jefferson County School Bus Driver Hiring Blitz is going to be this Saturday. It's from 9 to 2 at the Hilton Garden Inn by the airport, the Louisville Airport on Crittenden Drive. We have all the information for you posted at WHAS11.com. One in seven new mothers will experience postpartum depression, but resources for them are limited in our state. So today, Representative Kimberly Poor Moser from Northern Kentucky proposed a bill that would set up a special hotline specifically for maternal mental health. This hotline will be called the Kentucky Lifeline for Moms and will have a psychologist or psychiatrist on the other end of the line. This is well underway. We just wanted to codify this and make sure that this is something uh, long lasting for moms. A doctor or OBGYN can call the line and sets up a year of care for them. The representative says they've already applied and been granted $750,000 in grants to start the program. It also closes a glaring hole in insurance law. Right now, pregnancy is not considered a qualifying life event for some agencies, meaning some prenatal care is not covered. It'll be called the Kentucky Lifeline for Moms. It establishes a hotline which will be operated out of the cabinet. Uh, a psychiatrist and, and a psychologist will be hired to answer calls from an OBGYN or a primary care physician, someone who is caring for a pregnant mother who might have a mental health um, need. It would expand education for new moms about lactation care and safe sleeping. The bill passed the House Health Committee and it moves to the full house. Pharmaceutical CEOs in the hot seat today testifying before senators about high prescription drug cross costs right here in the United States. The heads of Johnson & Johnson, Merck and Bristol-Myers Squibb getting grilled about why costs are so high, citing research and development while defending the billions of dollars paid in dividends to stockholders. The committee says Johnson & Johnson charges Americans with arthritis $79,000 for Stellara, while the same product is about $16,000 in the United Kingdom. As we pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, 10 of the top pharmaceutical companies in America made over $110 billion in profits in 2022. They are doing phenomenally well while Americans cannot afford the cost of the medicine they need. Our priority is investing in R&D. We have spent uh, $77 billion since 2016. And yes, we have to pay dividends because it's the only way that the company can remain operational and sustainable. Some senators also criticize Congress for failing to act when it comes to lowering costs for all Americans.